pocket pony. I'm going to make a video from a different part of my apartment. This is in front of my computer and I'm looking out the window to downtown Phoenix. Uh, sitting at a place where I sit a lot, working on my projects and internet and so on. But anyway, today I've been over to the Circle K getting the papers. I got Today, The New Times, The Arizona Republic, because there was a number of stories that I wanted to read. Uh, mostly having to do with uh, the ruling by the Supreme Court on SB 1070, the immigration bill. And uh, so I was looking through these papers to see if there's anything of note uh, that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I noticed that uh, Montini, uh, an Arizona columnist, had an article on the uh, rudeness and lack of respect that Janet Brewer was showing the Obama administration and Obama himself uh, and talking, saying, suggesting that he that he had gone, uh, he, oh, he had provided a certain amnest, kind of amnesty for the children who were brought here uh, by their parents and really had nothing to do with the decision to be an illegal immigrant. And she implied that he was just looking for votes to do this. And uh, of course, I think that's well, kind of a low uh, motivation. Uh, and he didn't think she needed to say that. But well, I thought it was funny for Montini to be calling for more civility and respect uh, and control of her, her more irritability, you might say, the governor. Uh, when he has, not too long ago, he wrote a column uh, saying that these uh, abortion, uh, people fighting abortion, uh, had just about as much, you know, pro-life, had just about as much feeling for living children as a puppy in a pound. <laughs> well, I thought, wow! <laughs> so I, I thought, it goes for both sides that if they say something very insulting and denigrating and disrespectful about their opponents and they engage in that kind of rhetoric often, they could be said to be adding to the, oh, the extreme uh, atmosphere of bickering, of not cooperating with each other that is going on right now in our country and uh, I have my own problems see uh, I went out in the patio you know to enjoy a cup of coffee while it was still cool because I'm reading that there is record heat all over uh, global warming or something is here changing us and boy more heat is just not so I was out there very early with my papers and my coffee. And there's cooks out there that don't want to sit with me. They want to go over here, they just want to talk to their own that comes out there every day, that the clique that they belong to, and they don't want to have to adjust to another person coming in their bed, so they just kind of make it clear that they are just a little aggravated with you sitting to their table. So I ended up, you know, and then there's uh, a gentleman that I sat with yesterday who said F F F every other word so I thought oh, I don't I don't want to sit with him so I avoided him so I you know I decided I didn't want to sit at the table with him see we have about three or four tables out there so uh, then I asked some people if they minded if I sat with them well they they let me but uh, they soon got up and left well that's another point that kind of tells you well, you can sit here, but I'm going to leave then if you do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, pretty soon I ended up all by myself reading my paper. And I thought, well, I've been rejected by everybody. You know, just a little bit of rejection. And so, uh, I don't belong to the, the... So, I came upstairs and I told... Uh, 
uh, Doc, my companion, uh, that I was having a tough time finding people to talk to that I didn't quarrel with or like I do with him or, uh, you know, I was, wouldn't be, re I wouldn't. So I have to go, uh, this is why I have my Facebook friends because there are somebody on Facebook of my friends will always talk to me. They always say a word or two, you know, they won't act hostile. So this is, I find, uh, the big value of having a social network, a uh, website you could go to. And then I have my sister, uh, sisters, and uh, two sisters that are still living, and I can call one of them, and they won't, won't reject, you know, they'll be glad to hear from, from me, and especially one sister who's just uh, loved by everybody because she accepts everybody. And she never tells anybody off. She just kind and, oh boy, a sister like that is well worth having. And she's been going through an ordeal because her husband has like three kinds of cancer and they're all, two of them are terminal, major. So lung cancer and colon cancer. So, the, so she's been going through a terrible ordeal, but it can't compare to his because his getting worse and worse so I always call her and talk to her see how she's doing but she doesn't have very much time uh, hasn't been but now they finally had to take him to a care center so uh, because he was just getting too hard and requiring too many hours to do his take care of his needs at home so she's, she's dealing with that and also I am very pleased with my son coming over and doing a video and uh, Doc you know I I replaced him and uh, and so Doc he he uh, focused on one part of Rhett Raymond's video where I thought he very modestly said uh, something about well he knew his he didn't have the greatest singing voice in the world uh, but, you know, uh, and so Doc heard this on the video and said, well, at least he admitted the truth. And I said, oh, and uh, I told, I made the mistake of telling uh, Raymond that uh, he had said this, because he said it two or three times, you know, and this is what Doc does. He'll criticize and look down on people and sort of emphasize. And so uh, I told Raymond because I was talking to him about what Doc was doing to me on my videos, you know. Like, if I do a video that's off some, he'll say, that is the worst video you have ever done, and it's just horrible. And, <laughs> and then he got to saying it right on the camera. He would start acting like, what are you saying this far every day? It's just, mm. <laughs> So, uh, I told, so then I went and told Doc. See, I'm a, tr you know, sort of a troublemaker. So I went and told Doc, I said, well, I told Raymond what you said, that at least he admitted the truth, that he couldn't, his, didn't, wasn't a good singer, uh, as good a singer as, you know, some people. I mean, his dad was born with this glorious voice, Raymond's dad, and perfect, uh, always, on key, uh, whatever, you know, singers have to do. He would always do it. He could sing harmony with everybody. He grew up singing, taking lessons, and was recognized as a very talented singer. When he was just a little boy, nine years old, he was going around entertaining. And uh, so he had a terrific advantage. Well, Raymond is multi-talented, my son, you know, he was always an entertainer, uh, but he was a gymnast. He he did somersaults. He was going in that direction, and but yet he would put on shows. He would, so he came kind of late, you know, more in his twenties to to singing and learning to play the guitar, which his dad never did. And so I just thought, well, oh, this is marvelous. He's going to learn to play the guitar, and his dad. He was singing with his dad, and his dad was trying to teach him what he knew, and uh, he didn't exactly have his dad's uh, a unique voice, but I thought he's, he's got all, 
He's got the motive. He's got the work ethic. He is going to be a good singer, a good entertainer. And what more could you want? So uh, I, I thought it has been about five or six years since I heard him singing in the Boulder Festival, and I thought, Raymond has become a good singer. He can deliver a song. And uh, so I was very proud of him, you know, because he could also write plays uh, and was had a number of successful plays while he was doing them in Phoenix. And he went on tour with a play. So he was acting as well as singing. And I thought his last play show, one man show, was wonderful because it combined his acting talents with his uh, singing. And he, oh, he sang some very touching songs in that about his dad's disappearance into the desert. That's how his dad left us. We, no, his body was never found. It, it was a tragic kind of hungover, you know, this disappearance. Where was he? What was happening to him? And, uh, you know, here uh, Anne's husband is dying in full view. The family's all interacting, helping, talking to him, saying goodbye, and, and trying to help him. And... Raymond's dad just went off and disappeared and was never seen again. So, but people have different ways of leaving this world and some are tragic, but uh, uh, some are slow, some are fast. My sister died last year. She was found dead. It was a horrible shock because she hadn't been sick like that. She was still active. She herself, I don't think, anticipated her death at all. And I think it was possibly a blood clot because she'd had toe surgery that day. Toe surgery, imagine dying of toe surgery. <laughs> <coughs> and he, she had, <coughs> uh, had little problems with her heart. <coughs> so it could have been either. So we never know how we're going to leave this earth. <coughs> but I'm, you know, today I just want to say, let's all get along. Rodney King died. Well, that was, he's famous for saying that. And I, I feel that that's called for now. <coughs> is let's all cool the rhetoric. Cool the rhetoric that's too strong. Like when we don't show respect for the president, who has been elected the President of the United States, I, I think that shows that is going too far. You can show respect for a president, even when you don't agree with him. And I think we've had far too many uh, remarks that just did not show respect, could be interpreted as racist. And we've had remarks about illegals that I think show racism. Too much hate, too much, oh, those people. Mm. I lived 20 years on the West Side. Uh, I found many, many virtues in the Mexican people. And there were illegals coming there all the time. So uh, I saw that it, the illegal immigration impacted the Mex poor Mexican communities more than anybody because this is where they come. And the only, the time when the, the more the white, uh, citizens encountered illegals was on the roads when they were hit by an illegal uh, car uh, without a license maybe drunk driver this is just would just infuriate people and you know when they make a big bug uh, uh, drug bust uh, like see the latest one was 50 pounds of meth two illegals had it well, that just infuriates everyone to think they're up here and they're breaking the law in this outrageous fashion. So, you know, so, uh, and when they do break the law, you know, that's a big temptation to just blanket everybody with uh, your upset, uh, your anger, and get a little carried away and talking and saying things that just aren't going to help. That are going to create this atmosphere of uh, rejection so that uh, Spanish, Hispanics, Mexicans feel rejected, uh, any of them, because of expressing so much disdain and 
and uh, anger over someone being here illegally. So, you know, that, that's my message today. Is let's all try to get along. So, good night, Rodney King. You gave us that, that byword. Let, and it's a good one. So, thank you, and good night.